<laughs> I'm not making fun, I'm appreciating how the language sounds close to something I would say. Yeah, like in Spanish, like turkey is bobble. So I always remember bobble, bobble, bobble. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's it it a dorky, but I always remember it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I want you to realize. So two things. Uh, since we're testing a claim about the standard deviation, there's no way in hell I can use the normal curve. I need a distribution that talks about how standard deviations are distributed, and chi squared is what does that. So when I going to use the normal curve when I'm testing a claim about a percentage or a mean, because those follow the normal curve. Standard deviations are going to follow the chi-square distribution. That's why it was created. That's one reason why it was created. Uh, but, but it's just a hypothesis test. So it's going to have to follow the exact same steps we did before. It's just that when we get to step three and four, I've got to use chi-square. So the claim is still, I can find it the same way. I just use sigma because it's a claim about a standard deviation. The claim is it's less than 13. So which one is that? The whole or the high? The uh -oh. high. The high. Because it does not have a equal or an equal sign. So then the hoe is going to be? Yeah, so one tail or two tail? One, one. one tail. Uh, just the underlying distribution has to be normal, and their sample size is large enough, so the sampling distribution that we would take it from would be approximately normal. The rejection region, did I say what alpha was? Yes. So it was gonna what it's gonna be even if I didn't say so that's good job Jeff. So alpha is 0.05. What's my degrees of freedom? Thank God it's the same as before 33. Right, I can't remember. I don't think our chi square is that specific, so we just used the closest one, which on the chi square chart would be what? 30. 30. So we're just gonna have to use 30. One tail test. Which side is that tail going to be on? Because I think it's less than, so. So then what side of the chart am I going to look at? It's kind of nice. The side that I want to be on. It's awesome. But you got to be careful now. This is, the, again, this is set up to be the area to the right. So if alpha is 0.05, yeah, 0.95 would be above it. 0.05 is below, so 0.95 is above. Are you guys understanding that part? Yeah. Because here, where's 0.05 in this picture? To the left. It's in here, right, in the tail. So to the right of it would be how much? 0.95. 0.95, exactly. So you do have to do a little adjustment to use the chart. So 0.95 degrees of freedom, we're assuming it's close to 30. Oops. 18.493, yeah, I like it. It's like doing the opposite, like we have the negative and positive. Is that kind of what we're doing? Because 0.05 is like on this side of the curve, you know, going. Oh, yeah, because remember the z-score yeah. chart, this is the evil thing about the chi-square chart. The z-score chart was areas to the left. The chi-square <coughs> chart is areas to the right. Um, Why they do that? Just because we don't want to do it. I'm saying it's funny. your experience I hard. Sorry, I wasn't around when they did that. Yeah. So this, uh, I already forgot what it was. What was it? So I'm going to say this in words. If. Say again. Good. If chi square star, I like chi square star, is. No? Less than. Because I can see where my little rejection region is, right? 18.493, then we can reject the oh. <coughs> support the high. I like it. So we're using a different distribution, but the steps and the meaning behind the steps are the same. It's kind of nice. And now, since I've set up what far enough away is, what do I have a four here, Jay? I said what far enough away is. The fourth step is how far did we make it? So what did we see? We saw the standard deviation that we saw was 17.31. That's for women. This is all about men. 11.56. 11.56. And the sigma, I'm assuming it to be 
13. 13 to gas, because that's the one from our claim. 13. And now I just got to throw those into the formula. Of course, n minus 1 again was? 30. Let's, let's just put n. n is 34. So the formula that you can have on your formula sheet, this little dude there. So now you know everything to plug in there. So chi square would be 34 minus 1, 33 times 11.56 squared divided by 13 squared. Come to 33. Jeff, if the high was like sigma greater than 13, would you just go to the alpha 0 0.05 and just look at that opposed to going to 0 0.95? Yeah, if it was greater than, it would have been that side, okay. which would be that side of the chart. Oh, nice. I don't know if you guys realize that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. The side of the distribution you want to be on is the side of the chart you look at. Easy. Nice. I know. I never really thought about it that way until this semester. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. That makes that chart a little bit nicer. So, I don't know. What do you guys get for that? 26.094. 26? Yeah. 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 All right, and did that make it far enough down here? No. No, so right here. So that means we what? We failed. We have failed to. Yeah, support. we failed to reject the hoe. Failed to do what? Also. Support that. If we can't say hoe is wrong, we can't say the, the high looks right. And which one was reclaimed? The high. The high. Good. The high was the claim. So, so I want to use fail to support this language. The high. Yeah, so we failed to support the claim. So step five, the conclusion, we have not found sufficient evidence to do what? Support. To support what? The standard deviation for all males. I like it. That the standard deviation for all males. males. Is less than 13. Less than 13, so yes. So we have not found sufficient evidence to support that claim. Cool. So the sample standard deviation was obviously less than 13, but it's just a sample. It's got to be so less than 13 that it's evidence that the whole population standard deviation is less than 13. And it just wasn't. Right? If I just ask you, is 11.56 far from 13? Most of you would probably say, not really. But again, we have to do this test to really see how far relative away it was. Now, now don't feel bad. I mean, Z scores have immediate meaning. That's why I keep asking you that question that uh, someday in my wildest fantasy, everybody's going to get right. Chi square score, I can't look at like, uh, what did we get for? 26 point. I mean, you can't look at that and say that that 26 what? Uh, you can't, too bad for you. You can't say. It's just the number that falls on a distribution in a certain place. So a z-score, if I had a z-score of 26, right, that would mean that that data point is what? If a z-score is 26, what would that mean? And it's really far away from the... Be more specific. 26 standard deviations away from the data point. 26 standard deviations above the mean to the data point, right? So I can interpret a z-score. Chi-square score, I can't just look at it and say something like that. You guys see what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't just look at it and say, well, that's 26 inches. No, I don't. <laughs> you just have to let go of that for the chi squared distribution. All right. Well, I get how we do so far. Is that decent? So you will have a problem just like that. Yay. So where do you want to go next? I, I either want to go to uh, 9A or 10. All right, sure. Let's do 9A next. If you get tired of doing these, you can do the quiz corrections, you can do whatever the hell you want to, really. You could leave.